Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer for Four. So today we're going to talk about Chelsea 2, Borussia Dortmund 0, and Benfica 5, Club Rouge 1. We're going to start with the Chelsea game first, okay? So Chelsea won two goals to nil. This was a massive, massive win for Graham Potter's side as he was coming into this game with under severe pressure with Chelsea being mediocre this season in the Premier League, just coming off a win against Leeds United. And a lot of people said that if he didn't win this game, he could have been sacked. And obviously, we are yet to, um, obviously, he's kept his job for now. Chelsea will be in the Champions League quarterfinals. And despite the fact that they did win today, I'm still kind of, uh, this Chelsea team still haven't fully grown on me. This team looks good, but it doesn't feel as though this team is the well-balanced. And let's look into this performance. Because for Borussia Dortmund on the day, they were largely very poor. Largely very poor. They were terrible for most of this game. They didn't play well whatsoever. And for Chelsea in particular, man, they were amazing. They, they, they were the better team on the day. And I think they deservedly advanced. You know, let's look at that. Um, The first half in particular, it was all Chelsea. Chelsea created so many opportunities. They just couldn't score. They hit the bar on few occasions. Some of the chances went wide. I'm looking at that Havertz one that was disallowed, I believe, in the first half. Um, And then obviously you look at Dortmund in particular. They had the free kick, which um, I think Marco Royce took the free kick. And it was a great save from Kepa. And like I said, for that goal, man, what a goal that was from Raheem Sterling. The way he was able to maneuver himself, the way he was able to get the rebound, and it was a, such a beautiful goal. Beautiful goal, beautiful finish. And then from that point on, man, it was all Chelsea. Then came the penalty. Uh, it was a controversial penalty, to say the least. Wolf, uh, it touched Wolf's arm. Penalty was given, and up step Kai Havertz, and he scores his penalty. Well, actually, he missed initially uh, because of the fact um, there was some enro enroachment, I believe. I think some players went into the box earlier than it should have. Um, it was retaken, and Kai Havertz took the second time around, and he scores his penalty. As for Dortmund, man, they um, really didn't really do much afterwards. They had a really good chance with Jude Bellingham. I remember that big chance. I think it was a 69th minute, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me from the comment section below if I'm wrong. And yeah, like I said, man, it just it tells you we're just basically parking the bus um, from that point on. They had some few counterattacks. Uh, but they were mostly being defensive. You know, you can see Graham Potter making those substitutions, you know, bringing off the likes of Enzo Fernandez, bringing the likes of Kovacic, bringing the likes of ha Sterling and Felix. Uh, and I got to say, man, Kovacic was amazing today. I know he didn't score or get an assist, but for me, he was amazing. I think Chilwa also had a really good game. Reese James in particular also had a good game. And you can see how this Chelsea team is just that, like I said, they just need more firepower in the attack. I think that's the biggest issue with this Chelsea team is that this team isn't bad. It's just that they need more firepower in the attack. And I'm still not really convinced with the Havertz, even though he scored in the day. I still don't think he's that guy. And Sterling, of course, he still he still needs to improve. I still don't think this is Sterling that we have once seen under Pep Guardiola with Manchester City. As for Rizzi Dorman, as I said, they were not great on the day. You know, um, you know, obviously, um, Bellingham was in particular really, really a disappointment. I expected more from Bellingham. He was probably Dortmund's best player, which is actually saying something considering how poor they were for most of the game. Wolf was probably one of the worst players, giving away that penalty. I thought Schroederberg did have a good game uh, defensively. Marco Reutz was a bit quiet. Uh, Brandt as well, getting that early injury. And my man, Gio Reyna, came on. And I think he had an okay game. I'm not going to say he had a spectacular game, but he had some little moments in there, but not that much. And as I said, man, it was just a really, in particular, very, very poor performance from Dorman in particular, despite holding most of the possession and despite creating most of those chances. But as I said before, though, um, they were very, very poor on the day. And as I said, um, not very, very good. Most of the chances they had wide. And, um, yeah, I think that Royce free kick was probably the best opportunity they had in this game. Um, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, uh, for Chelsea, man, congratulations to them. They're in the Champions League quarterfinals. But... For me, man, they're going to have to do a lot better than this if they want to make the semis. Because like I said before, guys, this is a team that I think is is still is still rebuilding. I still think this is a team that still needs a lot of... Uh, they still they still are struggling at the moment. And they still need a lot more firepower to be that real complete team. So, now we're just going to go ahead and talk about the other game. Benfica 5, Club Rouge 1. What a win this is for Benfica, man. Benfica were absolutely on fire today. And I know people are going to tell me, oh, Club Rouge tax should be applied. I don't care. I simply don't care. Even if even if you're going against Club Rouge, you're still going to be against a Champions League team. This is a team that qualified with a group with Atletico Madrid and Bayer Leverkusen. Yes, I understand they were very poor. And I, don't get me wrong, they were terrible for most of this aggregate tie. But Benfica turned it up, man. Joao Mario scoring that brilliant goal in the second minute. I believe it was offside, unfortunately. And then, obviously, Rafa Silva scoring that goal. That was a nice, nice finish there. The way he was able to 
get the control, close control there. Gonzalo Ramos scoring that goal just before halftime was nice as well. And then obviously he scored a third goal and the draw Mario wins a penalty and then Dalvernero scores. And then obviously Bruges, they get one back with Barry Mayer, you know, Tejan Buchanan getting assist. And for Club Bruges, man, I just think that for me, they just need Jude Kala. I think Jude Kala for me is just such an important player for them. And I think he he was one of their best players in terms of goal scoring. And even though he came off the bench today, uh, the 62nd minute, I think he should have started. I think he should have started because for me, he was very, very, he was the reason why ben, Club Bruges even made the Champions League round of 16. And him and Vanekin were amazing. And then obviously Mingulate as well was amazing in goal, keeping those clean sheets. And you could see how I think the arrival of Scott Parker has really made them not that great in the league. You could see how they're struggling domestically speaking. Um, right now, Club Rouge, let's look at their league form. They've been really, really bad. Um, looking at this right now, they got a heavy defeat on the weekend. Um, to I for, um, They got a heavy defeat. I forgot which team they lost, but they lost by a significant margin. Um, let me see if we can find here. Yeah, they lost. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, they lost to Os Ostunde, a team that they really shouldn't be losing to, you know? Uh, you look at the table right now, guys. They're fourth in the league, and it's not really great go. And, um, you know, you're looking at this right here, guys. That there's, there's, they're not going to retain their title. Obviously, winning the title last season, Gank will most likely win the title. And even though they haven't had that many losses, they've had a lot of draws, which isn't bad. But it's just the, the draws, man. It's just the draws have been really particularly frustrating. And they really should be doing better than this. Like, they should be second or first in the league. They shouldn't be fourth in the league. It's, a, it's not that great. And they're barely hanging on to fourth because you can see Gant is on their shoulders. Standard League is on their West Order, You know, Circle Bruge. They're all around their shoulders. So for Club Rouge, man, if they don't tighten things up, they they we may not even see them in your um European competition next season, which I know is crazy to say, but they're just about hanging on to that Champions League, um, and hanging on to the Championship playoff. Because if they get fifth, they're not going to be even be in the Champions League. They're going to be in the Europa Conference League playoff, and they may not even get guaranteed Conference League. Let's be real though, they should be in Europe next season, but um there is a great possibility that we may not even see them in the Champions League. But uh, yeah, anyways, getting back to Benfica, man, they were amazing in the day. Gonzalo Ramos is really that guy. Joao Mario as well, Rafa Silva. I really like Joao Mario. I think he's such a good player, so underrated. This guy has been amazing. And I also really like how Benfica did um, Chukwanko. I think he's done a great job as an Enzo Fernandez replacement. Thiago, um, and then obviously Antonio Silva has been amazing as well in the center back position. I almost said Thiago Silva, but I meant to say Antonio Silva has been great. Youngster. And then obviously Bal has been really good as a right back. Grimaldo as well, underrated. Otamendi as well. This team, this team is just amazing. You look at the players they even have off the bench. They could afford to bring Derby Neres, Gilbulcher Jr., Joao Neves off the bench, Verissimo off the bench. That is amazing depth to have those kind of players on the bench. And so for Benfica, man, I'm happy for these boys. And let's just see what they can do, man, because I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. Don't be surprised. They could make a, maybe make a Champions League semifinals for what I know. I know that's crazy to say. And, um... But, you know, this Champions League season has been incredible, and they've just been amazing. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, if you know how to yeah, consider hitting that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. And comment up your thoughts in the comment section below. And also, consider becoming a member of the channel. I've actually readjusted the member uh, perks and levels. And so, the prices have changed, and it is now cheaper than it was. So, I hope you guys do find that to be better for you guys. So, anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy. Comment up your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. Share this baby with your friends, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.